Well, that's the beer video. Um, again, um, hey, they tried to shoot him again, apparently. Okay, I heard someone just smuggled a gun yeah. uh, to Mar-a-Lago, but I guess why would you do that if you weren't planning on shooting him? <laughs> um, boy, people really, uh, really need to practice their marksmanship, eh? I guess. I don't know. I, uh... Does it? All right. I'm not saying that I don't believe anything any, about anything being a conspiracy theory. I know people are like, oh, he staged this. What, what Would you be surprised if he did? No. But um, uh, at the same time, I'm watching somebody get pilled before my eyes on social media. Oh, yeah. So I'm the same is happening to me. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go and turn the light on real quick because oh, that is a little faster than I thought it would. Okay. Yeah, it's funny because the sky behind you looked like how this. Oh, because it's that window. It, it looked like I thought that was the sky. It's not. It's it's your ceiling. But I thought it was. I thought it looked yellow, like how the skies on King of the Hill are always yellow for some bizarre reason. Well, Texas is a cursed, cursed place. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Uh. Yeah. Th so you've been watching somebody get pilled in real time too, then? Kinda. Um. Well, I don't think, I think maybe they've, they're off it now. It's one of those things where, like, um, I don't know them well enough to really talk about it yeah. uh, with them. But, um, yeah, I saw someone get, like, really into the Save the Children shit. Yeah. And it's like, my dude, like, I don't know. Like, every, anytime someone gets, like, very into posting stuff about like how they're gonna hunt pedophiles or whatever yeah like i get a little suspicious because it's like yeah you know no obviously no one likes child abusers no. but like, if you kind of make that your thing i don't know i find maybe it's just me being paranoid but i find it's almost always cover for some like other like grosser thing yeah like it's like, yeah, let's like eliminate the pedos and then you find out like they think all gay people are pedophiles or whatever. Yeah. Um yeah, but, I mean, the problem with that is they all of their all the people they disagree with, they just label a pedophile. So not only does it take the piss out of their argument because you, you're just saying that because you don't like a person because you disagree with them, but it also takes the emphasis out of people who actually are pedophiles and who actually are hurting people. It 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 just takes the sting, not to take the sting out of that, but it it. God, how do I say this without sounding ridiculous? Because obviously, it's always going to be a serious crime, and it's always going to be horrifying those things. But like when you're labeling everybody that, it, it just the people that actually are doing these things. It just takes the weight out of maybe the the enthusiasm people have to for for actually finding and prosecuting real criminals like people that are actually doing these things i don't does that make any sense yeah well i think like you know i think the thing that sticks with me is about how like an anti-child trafficking hotline actively told these QAnon fox like please stop calling us like you're giving <laughs> us yes. these like bogus third hand stories that like we can't realistically follow up on and it's yeah. clogging um our helpline to the point we are not able to help people who are actually being abused and yeah the thing that, like, a lot of these people, like, they frame it as, like, child trafficking is something that's done by, like, a, a shadowy group of, like, a dozen rich people or whatever. And it's like, well, children are most likely to be abused by people they trust. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. a lot of trafficking happens when, like, say, a younger girl gets, like, an older boyfriend. Yeah. And, like, you know, he kind of pinches her off from her support network. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, like most children are sexually abused by like if not a family member then like a family friend yeah. or someone who's like kind of a trusted community member like you know look mm -hmm. at how often it's happened to catholic priests like yeah yeah i had a friend that had a friend of mine that happened to him and he is not with us anymore yeah um you know and this is going to sound like i'm joking but john wayne gacy was a respected community member uh -huh. and a beloved party clown like yeah 
And the reason Jeffrey Dahmer got away with stuff for so long, like, I mean, I guess he wasn't strictly a child abuser, but like a lot of people were super young, yeah. um, was because, you know, he was like a presentable white guy. Like, mm -hmm. the, I'm sure you've heard the story about, like, the police actually returned one of his victims to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, Ted Bundy, I mean, you know, Ted Bundy was for some reason deemed attractive. Maybe it's because it's the 70s and that's just whatever. But, um, but still, I mean, to the point where a judge let him, you know, pre present his own case in court. And whenever the uh, verdict was, was, you know, the, whenever he was found guilty, I think it was during the sentencing, he had told Ted Bundy, you know, in another situation, I would have had, it would have been a pleasure to have you in court. Are you fucking kidding? So I'm being serious. That really happened. Sorry, I'm looking out my window. Uh, there appeared to be some young men biking, I think, drunk. I'm living on one-way street, and they're biking the wrong way down it. At least there's lights on the bikes. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Well, this is this has been a uh, uh, really um, everybody's just a really fun opening. <laughs> so let's get to beer. Um, you did go first last week, I believe, okay. or whenever that was. Um, so anyway, I had two beers I was going to choose from. Something got sp some something spilled on this can. It was in the refrigerator for a couple of days. Anyway, I had two beers, and I thought that it's still a little too early to start jumping into Halloween beers. Uh, it's still technically summer, you know, but it's not too early to jump into Oktoberfest beers. And so this is from Evil Genius. Uh, it's called Is Butter a Carb? And it is a pretzel Oktoberfest beer. Yes. You, you know where that's from, right? No, I actually don't. Is or Butter a Carb don't. is a line from Mean Girls. Oh, from, okay. Most of their beers are named after lines from movies, so I should have known that. Um, but the only thing better than pretzels and beer is pretzels in beer. The crisp Oktoberfest style lager was brewed with malt hops and warm soft pretzels for an extra, do the extra dose of rich flavor, which means this is going to taste a lot like bread. Um, and I'm drinking out of a Winchester glass. I just got this one. Uh, it's the 20th anniversary of Shaun of the Dead. Um, for some reason, this glass is so cloudy. I have cleaned this glass a million times and I can't get this film off of it. Anyway. Um, there's a local bar actually around here that's like a 15 minute walk from my house that Matt and I and some of our friends call the Winchester. Yeah, just really? because like it's good, it's cheap, the yeah. food is excellent, and like I don't know. Um, I didn't this week, but usually every week I go there and read for a bit, like yeah. on the weekends. That's a good thing. Um, kind of a dark amber color. Um, there was some head, but um, it has gone away. It smells like a beer hall. I mean, it just smells like a beer hall. Um, yeah, it tastes like a lager. Um, maybe a... Uh, yeah, it tastes like a lager. Um, but a decent one. Um, that... There is um, there's a decent uh, bite to the bitterness um, that I guess I'm a little surprised by, but no, maybe not really. Um, uh, you know, yeah, there's a little bit of a yeasty taste to it. I'm assuming that's where the pretzels are kind of coming in. Um, I can't say that if somebody handed me this beer blind and didn't tell me there were pretzels in it, there's no way I ever would have guessed that. Um, so that's... Uh, not really standing out to me um i don't know what the abv is i don't know if they listed it it might be so low that they didn't because was it on the bottom i think it's on the bottom but i can't look at it otherwise i will spill the beer everywhere um yeah, i'll just pour the rest of the beer and look at it uh it's it's fine i'm not a giant fan of like the oktoberfest style beers they're really not my thing um <clears throat> i don't mind them uh no the abb is not on the bottom it's just a bunch of numbers i don't know what it is i'm assuming it's a low because oh no it's 5.5 there it is um i'm not a giant fan of like oktoberfest beers i don't know that i'd get a lot of pleasure out of going to a beer hall and having one of those huge 
steins of that stuff it's not my taste um that said this isn't a bad beer um and if i was somewhere where this was the only beer they had and they handed it to me i would drink it happily so wow what an endorsement for evil twin <laughs> but if you like this type of beer this is a, this is a pretty well done version of it i also will we'll put it that way cool yeah all right well, um, it's still hot on this porch. Um, we're having we had a week of normal weather. Yeah. And now we're back to it being swampy, unfortunately. It's like that here too, I know. It sucks. Yeah. So okay, well I'm gonna fan myself up and point out I had a couple I had lined up for this week, but you know what? I'm gonna do actually all it's of mystery. them at once mystery beer hey yes. they brought these back i'm so excited so uh, all i know about this is it's an abbey ale i picked this for the i really like belgian style so yeah. i guess uh, i'm gonna set this aside and shake out the treats that are in the bottom of the yes bag. the treats yes Did I get a treatless bag wait no i didn't okay uh, a little skimpy on the treats here come on idiots yeah, I know. I've got to never have I ever, never have I ever ridden in a closed trunk of a car. That is true for me. I've ridden in a truck bed, but I haven't um, yeah. done that. And I've got a sticker for La Doña. There you go. It's a brewery around here run by um, a Mexican-American fella. Um, they have an excellent mole stout that I love drinking in the fall. And um, uh, pretty decent, like, golden ale. Um, I like their stuff because it tends it's very reasonably priced for a local craft brewery. Usually a four pack's just about ten bucks. So yeah. On a good value for money. Okay, New beer. Holland. New Holland had a mole stout uh several years ago. I don't think they make it anymore. That was really good. All right. So what do we got here? We got a San Bernardus. Uh maybe T twelve Abbey Hill. <laughs> I just noticed this was ten percent alcohol. So. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you opened the bottle, I knew that that was a uh, that was a heavy one. Well, let's party. That's yeah. It's <laughs> Sunday. Who gives a fuck? I've got my puppers glass. I also yeah. have an issue, I think, where like I can't get my glasses ever as clean as I want. How did this? How did I pour that so badly? I know. I exactly. just saw it flying in there, and then the head just exploding. It seemed like you poured it all right too. I don't know. See. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm fucking I'm retiring from pouring beer, evidently. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's just give this a minute to settle down. That's fine. Why don't we uh why don't we while while it's settling down, tell us about your high spirit shirt. Oh, um so yeah, I don't know. It's a high high spirit shirt from I think this is their first album. This is technically a crop top, but I'm sitting a little low so you can't see it. Um and I'm not gonna show that off. I've been feeling self-conscious about how my stomach looks lately. <laughs> but and i'm well i'm wearing a shirt under it anyway um so this one's cool uh i bought it actually off of uh shane mathis who's a, a music writer mm -hmm. uh, work i've enjoyed he used to run a podcast called full metal hipster and i'm sad he doesn't um apparently like he doesn't anymore because like he um his time is taken up by his grown-up job which I totally yeah. understand, but he always had like a really solid year end list uh, broken up by like subgenre. And like oh. he always had the best power metal recommendations. I still listen to a lot of bands that like he put on those year end lists. So yeah. it's kind of a bummer that that's not a thing anymore. But you know, yeah. I understand like why he doesn't want to do additional work for free on top of, yeah, um, all that. But yeah, he was selling some of his old band shirts to raise money for. I think it was, what is that legal aid organization for immigrants? Starts with an R. Uh, oh, God. I, God oh, I can't remember. I know what you're, uh, I know what you're talking about. And I can't R R A I uh, C E S, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, he was raising money for them. And I was like, uh, well, I need a high spirit shirt. Yeah. He's a bigger guy than I. So I had to doctor this with the sewing machine quite a bit. But yeah. Uh, you do what you do. I'm just wearing a heavy temple shirt. I may have worn this before. It's a heavy temple shirt that's based on the kill them all cover and it just says spill them all and it's somebody spilling a beer, which seems um fitting for the beer video. 
Yes. Okay. Finally, this is in in the in the glass. In the glass. Okay. Yeah. Um. You can't see the Puppers logo, which is unfortunate. Yeah, it's a little, little obscured at this point. We yeah. know it's there. That would be more visible with like it's more visible in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. I guess it's just the lighting in here isn't great. Um. Let's see. Mm. Not much I can tell by the smell. Let's have a sip. Hmm, you know, that's what I like about Belgians. They always like remind me of a really delicious baked good. Yeah. I don't understand like um a lot of like real sugary sweet dessert stouts and stuff um seem like pointless to me because i think you can get like a really nice kind of natural tasting sweetness just out of like regular beer ingredients and yeah, this is yeah. kind of an example like this beer tastes like um the kind of uh caramel donut i had mm. uh last night matt's been bringing home donuts i'm pretty sure he's like trying to get me fat i don't know if like <laughs> um this is the drag me down to his level thing. He's not a chunky dude, but no, that's what I was like. What? He's always bitching about how he has too much of a belly, and I'm like, well, you just gotta work out more, baby. And like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, sorry, went off on a tangent. No, that's okay. Donut. Um... Oh, sorry, we yawning. This is great. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. This tastes like kind of brown sugar and. Um brown sugar and grains basically um it's sweet i think but it's like sweet like a like like a, uh like a non-dessert wine if that makes sense like sure. kind of a subtle sweetness yeah um yeah like uh like dried fruit or something like uh kind of reminds me of eating dates okay um, that's not bad yeah, that's what I like about uh, Belgian styles. It always like it's got that kind of nice dried fruit sweetness. Yeah, and that comes kind of naturally from grains and stuff, and malt and what have you. Um, it's really nice. Um, <laughs> it looks it looks a little darker than I expected, or is that just the lighting? I can't tell. Uh, no, it is pretty dark. It's uh -huh. like um, it's darker than a brown ale, lighter than a stout. I would say. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it makes sense. Um, yeah. Belgian beers can vary. There's obviously golden ones like uh, Golden Drock, my beloved Golden Drock. Yeah, I haven't had one of those in a while. Yeah, they're delightful. The problem is they're very, very strong, so it's a one and yeah. done wish. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, uh, Athletic Brewing, they make non-alcoholic yeah. beers, and they make a golden ale. Um, which tastes like quite a bit like Golden Drock. Huh. So like occasionally I'll buy a six or those if I want to enjoy the taste of delicious, delicious Golden Drock, but I don't want to write off my entire afternoon. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're actually like if you are into NA beer for whatever reason, um, you know, I drank those a fair amount when I was not drinking beer myself. They're like they're really good brewers, like legit good. Yeah, um, yeah. I've always heard. I mean, I've heard nothing but good things. Yep. Um, we've come a long way from when your options were like a kind of sad oat water. Yeah, like an old an old duels on the uh, supermarket shelf that would just be not with beer but with other things. And actually, the beer I have lined up for next week, like um, there's there's been some breweries, like especially wooden ship. Mm -hmm. making stuff that isn't like non-alcoholic strictly but it's like two or three percent like yeah. really way maybe like <laughs> i think they're generally called farmhouse or table beers yeah or, those are neat yeah but they've got, uh, what's that you have to drink 200 of them i mean for me i'd have to drink two or three but i recognize not everyone's the size of a third grader so ah there you go uh well it's been. I just realized how weird that this is like the second shirt in a row where the neck hole is weird. And this I maybe I need the because I I dried it on a hanger and I think that uh, the shoulders now are uh, showing that I did that. 
Yeah, I always dry my stuff draped over something. Um, otherwise, you get the turbo shoulders like an 80s power suit. Did yeah. We go this entire beer video without mentioning Laura Loomer. Do we? Do I have to mention Laura Loomer? Can I tell you something that I swear to God I did not know? I had no idea. Um, yeah. yeah, four she or five. Thirty-one yeah. years old. That bitch is a decade, almost a full decade younger than me. How? And the thing is, I mean, I know why, because she's fucked up her face so badly. Honestly, it's at the point where, like, um, I don't object to people getting plastic surgery. I've seen people get it, like, on their faces, even. And, like, you know, if your surgeon knows what they're doing and isn't willing to, like, indulge your every worst instinct, it can look fine. Like, I don't know. I think we have a social media mutual who got like a nose job a little bit ago and her nose still looks real fucking normal. Like, yeah, yeah looks you fine. Fill me in on who that is because I'm drawing a blank, but that's OK. Yeah. Well, see, like, I think that's the thing. Like, if you if you didn't see her say specifically she had a nose job, you can't yeah. tell because right. her nose still looks like a normal nose and not a weird little withered beak like Laura Loomer's does. And Laura Loomer looked normal before. There was nothing yeah, yeah. Funny, what she looked like. I saw like. a picture of her in her 20s. She was pretty. Yeah. Like, she just kind of had a big beak, like, kind of like how I have. Ha, ha, ha. Um, yeah, like, and apparent, yeah. It, see, that's one of the only things I legitimately feel bad about. Like, she obviously has, like, some pretty bad body image issues. Uh, yeah, and, I like, think so, yeah. Yeah, you know, an ethical plastic surgeon, I think, would, like, maybe work with her to try to figure out, like, some way to, like, modify her <laughs> face. So, like, it was maybe closer to what she wanted, yeah. but wasn't so fucking hacked up looking. Like, oh, yeah, it, it almost seems like, I, I don't know this, but it's like she got one fucked up surgery or something and then had to get it fixed or tried to do something to make it look better and it just ended up making it worse I, I don't know but yeah it's definitely a case of way too much surgery yeah there's like the the nose job which like um i understand why people get them sometimes you know i will yeah. not tell anyone what to do with their body but yeah. like it kind of like makes me sad to see women who like have like prominent noses but they look fine on their face they're carrying them well you know like um and then they just get plastic surgery and it's this very generic like um little very narrow very upturned okay for all my Baldur's Gate people out there like they make themselves kind of look like the Gip Yankee <laughs> I'll send you a picture so you know what I'm talking I may about. Have seen, I may have seen this character. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it, it, it looks way worse. And like, but that's kind of what a woman's nose is supposed to look like. It's supposed yeah. to look very delicate like that. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, it's, a, it's a bummer. It's like, again, like, I'm not going to tell anyone how to feel about their features or what to do about yeah. them. But like feels like people sometimes get pressured into like getting procedures that don't really make them look that much better yeah um, yeah i i don't know i mean honestly her face is the least <laughs> the least troubling thing about her i mean there's so many uh, the the apparent rumor about the affair with trump it tracks i mean it like, sure does yeah, like the guy is not exactly known for being faithful to his various spouses. Mm -hmm. But also it seems like a main source of that is Milo Yiannopoulos, who it must be said has spent his entire time in the public eye on earth as effectively a professional liar. Yeah. And uh his main thing these days seems to be trying to burn his bridges with like everyone he ever knew in the right wing space. Yeah. I before he was picking fights with Laura Loomer, he was um, fighting with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah. Who... Okay. Who's, she's trying to fight with Laura Loomer. You know, um, it's it was one of those, like, okay, I guess a stop clock is right twice a day. Like, <laughs> you know, 
Lord knows, Marjorie Taylor Greene has said some insane and racist shit. She has, I believe she's personally attacked my congresswoman, not physically, but like, no, I know she said some extremely racist shit about Ilhan Omar. Yeah, um, shocks. Shocked. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, the whole thing where like, you know, fucking Laura Loomer is like, oh, Kamali, it's elected White House is going to reek of curry. And she's like, okay, okay, like, please stop. You're yeah. just making us all look bad. Yeah. I have to wonder if she said that actually because uh, J.D. Vance's wife is Indian. Like. Yeah, that's a good point. Or she so, just didn't so even think of it. J.D. Vance's mother-in-law is a, I believe, um, she's a college professor. Mm -hmm. I want to say biology. Yeah, and I can't remember. His wife is actually fairly accomplished as well. Like, I think Usha Vance has yeah. like PhD. So can you imagine what like that family huddle is like? Like, no, you know, like you're you're like you, you know, like uh, these scientists coming together, like be like, honey, your husband's like making weird racist Facebook uncle rants about like Haitian immigrants eating cats. Yeah. Like, that's what he's doing with his life. And yeah. So. yeah. And yeah, the whole, like the purpose of the postmenopausal female thing that was uncovered a while ago. It's like, you are a professional like bullshit artist and your mother-in-law is a scientist. Yeah. Like, in terms of who has a real job, I don't think it's a contest. No, no, it's not. It's funny today. I, I, Pete Buttigieg was on. I think he was on CNN. He might, it might have been. He was interviewed somewhere. I think it was CNN. And they were asking him about like, what is your take on the whole thing about you know Springfield and all the things you know the stuff that Vance started and you know whatever. And he had a really good answer. Where he was like, I don't even want to talk about that stuff because all they're trying to do is make that the issue and make people talk about that instead of Trump's awful record. So they're trying to change that conversation. So that's what, so we're not talking about, which they do all the time. All their politics are distraction politics of like, there's something that you can rightfully criticize them for. And then they point to look at that thing over there so that you're not paying attention to what they're actually doing. And so I thought that was a good point where it's like, I tried, I, I really have not said much about the Springfield thing because it's so fucking stupid. And I think I joked about it. The, that, um... I've engaged with stuff about that. It's mostly too stupid to bother addressing. But I thought one of my jujitsu teachers said something pretty funny. Um, so she's an immigrant. Uh, she's yeah. from Paraguay. Yeah. Um, and she posts like, hey, everybody, just chill out. Yeah. Um, I may be an immigrant, but I'm I'm vegan. Yeah. I'm not your pets. I'm just going to cuddle them. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like. I realize Haiti's had its issues. I real and fuck. I mean, the United States is responsible for how much of the problems they have gone through. You know, most of them. Um, but well, sir, um, all the immigrants in Springfield are there legally, so it must be said they're not necessarily citizens yet, but they're right, not, right. like undocumented. They yeah. are. They are refugees. They are right. Documented, and, and actually. Plus their plus their local economy has actually improved uh, over the last few years now that their population's gone up. Yeah, actually, the same thing happened when I grew up um, in the early 2000s with Lewiston, Maine and the Somali population there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was the same thing, you know, like um, Lewiston was a dying town right. and like fairly revitalized, but it came with an accompanying strain on social services in the housing market, like you would expect with any um, any major influx of people there. Right, right. Yeah. You know, actually, the funniest thing was um, I was, uh, this is oof, 20 years ago now, over now, over 20 years ago. So um, I was out like, you know, I was, uh, what was it? 17 and a hothead. I decided I was going to go shout at the Nazis. They're having a rally there. Yeah. And, you know, me and my friends were in a shouting match with some of them. Thankfully, it didn't turn physical. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, this one, like, stupid idiot was like, um, you know, the Somalis, they come here and, like, they've, like, you know, 
besmirched our beloved community of Lewis and Maine and guy behind me, crusty old Maine curmudgeon dude, just yells, I've lived in Lewiston for 20 years and it's always been a shithole. Well, it's, at the time, very true. It's yeah. gotten, it's on the up and up now. It's doing yeah. better. Like, I think Pete, like, in addition to like immigration, kind of giving it like a shot in the arm a bit. Yeah. Um, it, which, you know, kind of a mixed thing overall, but like, you know, people willing to come there and work and participate in community. Yeah. Oh, probably a good thing. But yeah, like, <laughs> More people are living there because uh, everyone's been priced out of Portland. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But yeah, at the time that guy said that, like, yeah, Lewiston was very much known as not being a place you wanted to exist. Yeah. Um, my my dad at the time called it the armpit of Maine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering if uh, the same is true for Springfield, Ohio, a town I don't know much about. But yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I don't, it, uh, you know. I, I don't know. I just let's stop talking about bullshit and let's uh, focus on what a fucking complete disaster this guy was the first four years. And we do not need this to happen again. We just don't. Oh, we all saw the debate, didn't we? God, I hope. I don't understand how that night wasn't disqualifying for him like it was for Joe Biden whenever uh, for their first debate. I, I don't understand how it wasn't disqualifying. How, how do you run this guy? What I vote for him out is I thought Trump sounded exactly as insane as he did in the first debate. The only problem was Joe Biden was so right. competent in that debate that like no one noticed. Yeah. Since he was up against like a pretty normal with it person this time, yeah, yeah. everyone kind of noticed that shit. Yeah. Yeah. It was I don't know. I, I it was so blatant and apparent that I just I I never understood how you could vote for the guy or support him. But I was the degree like, to which she was baiting him. So oh god, like, it was so obvious to me. Like it was on the level of does this bug you? I'm not touching you. Does this bug you? Yeah, yeah. And and the truest thing she said during that debate is Putin would eat him for lunch because she fucking did on television in front of sixty million people over and over again. Yeah, I wasn't crazy about some of the things she said. Like, I don't understand why Democratic candidates feel the need to talk about, like, how much they love fracking in the I military. Know. Yeah. But, I don't know. Like, I get it. Like, that's kind of the stuff you have to say. Yeah. Like, the talking points, the bullet points you got to go over. Um, but you know what? Like, uh, the yeah. tragic thing is, um, you know... I have made my peace. I'm going to fucking hold my nose and do it. I don't blame anyone if they think like her handling of Gaza or Biden's handling of Gaza, which I guess she's kind of tied to the British yeah. Empire. But yeah, no, I mean, it's fair. I mean, look, that's that's the thing is that even if I vote for a candidate, there's never been a candidate I've ever voted for where I'm like 100% perfect. I love everything. Uh, also, I feel like it must be said, um, the third party landscape in the U.S. is dominated by grifter freaks. Right. And so that's, that's never going to be viable if that. And um, who is pretty firmly anti-Harris. And I think he has like pretty legit reasons, too. He's horrified at the Gaza situation. Yeah. They're pretty steamed about Tim Wallace's handling of the protests here. I think those are pretty legit reasons. Sure. But like, you know, I was mentioning, like, man, like, did you notice Jill Stein's trying to uh, like capitalize on opposition to this? And he, like, we had some beers. So he goes off on this whole rant, like, about how, I don't know if you remember the Dakota Access Pipeline protests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's like, Jill Stein showed up for a fucking photo op there. Yeah, and then but she, that's what she always does. She shows up once every four fucking years. And, like, one thing I will say, I have mixed feelings on the DSA for a variety of reasons. I think, like, regionally they're quite variable in how good and effective they are. Yeah. But one thing they really clocked was, like, it's important to get low-level candidates like city council and shit. And, yes. Yes. And I don't care about you if all you do is show up four years and be like, I do better than this, these guys. Like, that's what the Green Party's been doing since I was in high school. Yeah. And 
they're complaining like, oh, we've been shut out by the two party machine. It's like, well, you, you got yourself it out. all the time and like you never change your strategy. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you're going to say that you have to at some point accept like that's the fact of how this the political machine in this country operates and like yeah. try to figure out how to either stop that from happening or work around it. Totally. Like, yeah. right now, all you do is spend like every four years complaining about it and like fucking money please yeah or like disaffected leftists and i think it's really scummy no I, yeah. I think it's just shitty to take advantage of people's like justifiable dis disillusionment with the political process in the in this country and just like fucking yeah. smoke up their ass and like yeah. mind your own part pockets it's disgusting yeah yeah show me yeah show us you mean it run for fucking city council run for school board run for state senate especially school board like um especially People sleep on those, like, yeah. school board and city council and stuff. And that's why, like, people being underinformed on local races is how psychos get in there. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, like yeah. Liberty are doing right now. Yep. Like, I'm sure I don't, I don't need to tell you. Yeah. Well, that's a great way to end this video because we're almost out of the allotted time that I am given from using a free version of this software. So we're going to end on that. And uh, just go have some beers. Um, you know, if there's a... Uh, some fucking cool shit going on in your community involving, you know, people from other countries. Go check that shit out. Uh, yeah. It's better. They have cool, uh, they have a cool, interesting culture that you don't know about. You'll learn something and you'll realize that these people are not <laughs> animals that need to be feared. They're people who are trying to find a better situation. In cities area, um, go eat at Dilla's in the West Bank. Real good. That's uh, go. Ethiopian food uh, run by Somali Somali folks, uh, Afro Deli is a good Somali owned chain of restaurants. Um, I'm sorry, this is just all food recommendations. Uh, and Hmong Village, go there. We have a big Hmong population as well. Um, go get the stuffed chicken wings, you won't regret it. There you and, go. Um, yeah, um, I don't know. I live in a neighborhood with a lot of South American immigrants. Uh, I've got Valerie's Carniceria right around the corner. Yeah. Uh, did I just talk to myself? Oops. Well, <laughs> everybody's coming. And uh, and go have a beer. Yeah. All right. We'll see y'all next week.